Bo Bishop, Anthony Rothman, Monday edition of the program. It is Michigan week, and uh, probably, you know, if there's ever a week where you say, God, if we get Troy Smith on, when you start this would go, be the week. I mean, he is so list. synonymous. Who would you like to get on? What, yeah. How are you going to rank those people? Yep. Uh, you start with your top draft pick, and uh, for this game, it's Troy Smith. And we bring him on now, the Buckeye Heisman winner, Troy Smith, joining us. And, Troy, what was it about this week for you in preparation for it, uh, in playing the game that allowed you to have the success that you had uh, when it came to those those unbelievable Saturdays you had against Michigan? Well, first off, Bo and Anthony, I appreciate the kind words and the introduction. That was pretty sweet, pretty crafty. And um, to answer the question, um, you know, the week was – pretty much put into perspective for the whole year. Uh, we always had little uh, snippets of things that we would always implement uh, getting ready for uh, the big game at the, you know, at the end of the season. And, uh, you know, it just pretty much it was kind of cumulative because everything kind of added up and uh, it just made sense that, you know, it would all trickle down and come together at the end of the season. Troy, I think the thing that's interesting about when you beat Michigan – and when your teams did, is that Michigan was at that time still very, very good. Uh, you guys yeah. were beating, this was before the Rich Rod era where they became so incompetent. Uh, these were quality Michigan teams, and you guys just seemed to be more clutch than them when it mattered most. How confident right. were you going into those games, and how did you get that confidence to play out on Saturday? Well, um, our confidence level always started with our head coach, and that was uh, Jim Trestle. And- the way that he approached uh, big games and the way that he approached football in general uh, did nothing but, you know, rub off on us and reverberate through the whole team and uh, make us have a total understanding uh, to what, you know, games in the Big Ten and what this game really meant to Buckeye Nation and Buckeyes everywhere uh, around the country. So, uh, you know, that always helped us out because we had great leaders uh, and, and we, you know, in fact, turned into great followers also. Troy, great to talk with you. I'll take you back to 2006 because it's what everyone believes is, you know, the game of the decade. And I'm curious what your thoughts were going into that. Michigan was a team that we all believed you would beat, but uh, they lose Bo Schembechler, you know, the, right. that weekend and all that. And you thought if Michigan had one intangible, it might be that. Uh, when you recall that game and the, and the great game that you had, uh, what's the first thing that pops in your mind? What will you remember? And it's funny that you say that uh, in regards to uh, Michigan uh, losing the great Bo Schembechler, God rest his soul, because that was, you know, something key that I thought about. Uh, them having the ability to uh, be in a situation where you never want to lose a loved one, but especially when it's a guy like that who is a legend, uh, from your school, and, you know, it's a sad way to get uh, some extra energy and ignite your team, but, I, you know, I had that in the back of my mind the whole time, and that was very clear and evident. But, you know, that wasn't God's plan that day. It was a pretty special day, and the anticipation leading up into that game, hopefully the actual game on the field made up for it all because as nerve-wracking as it was, uh, to the average fan and to uh, all of the people around the nation. It was chomping at the bit for us the whole season, too. So hopefully it you know lived up to the hype. Troy, what kind of uh, advice would you give a guy playing uh, in this rivalry game, or maybe a young guy, or, or Braxton Miller played great last year, almost won the game, uh, had the right. one overthrow at the end. But uh, talk about you know maybe what – you would tell him, or, or do you speak to him? Do you have a relationship with Braxton Miller, and, and uh, tell us what that's like? I do have a relationship with Braxton, just like I have a relationship with all of the rest of the quarterbacks on the uh, on the squad. Uh, I think that too many times, uh, you know, the quote-unquote key and marquee, uh, you know, figure of what's going on is allotted too much um, shine and all of the above. So I don't want to just make it as if I'm only dealing with Braxton Miller or I'm only dealing with the starters. I feel for the rest of the kids just like I do for Braxton, and they all mean that much to me. Um, but getting back to the question, what I would tell a guy in reference to this game is, is embrace it. Uh, 
from my first season there on to my red shirt senior season, I got a chance to be a part of the greatest rivalry in college sports, arguably in sports in its entirety, and um, embrace it, have an understanding to what you represent as a Buckeye, have an understanding to what this rivalry and this game means to college football. There's a reason why they call it the best rivalry in college football. And when you are and have a chance to be a part of something special like that, uh, just embrace it and understand that not everybody has this chance and this opportunity to wear the scarlet and gray, and it's pretty special for you to be here. So just embrace it. Talking with Troy Smith, Buckeye Heisman Trophy winner. Uh, Troy, I see on the sidelines now, and I, I know your your playing career is over. Uh, just just kind of tell us a little bit about about that decision to stop playing and, and transition back to campus. And, and obviously, you came home to Columbus and um, and and getting back into work with the athletic department. What was it that inspired you to do that? And uh, how are you liking not playing football? Well, for me, it was kind of easy, and uh, you get a chance to talk to people. Uh, throughout the course of their life and your life, and you meet people who are quote-unquote journeymen in what they do. And don't get me wrong, I think it speaks volumes to any type of journeyman in their fields and what they have going on to continuously uh, take stabs at what they believe in and what they feel true uh, to be uh, life for them. And, um, you know, just for me, I, I... I didn't want to keep relocating my family. I didn't want to keep relocating myself. Uh, the last place to where, uh, I'm not saying that I didn't get fair shakes, but the last place that really opened the playbook up to me and looked at me and um, accepted me for who I was and allowed me to grow and then obviously achieve great things was this great university. So it wasn't hard for me to, you know, make the transition from being an athlete, a student athlete, to, you know, being uh, a part of uh, this great thing that we call life on a daily basis. Uh, honestly, I've always kind of joked and, uh, you know, thought about this sparingly is uh, we as athletes are kind of in a, uh, you know, microscopic type situation to where the things that you do nowadays because the different media outlets are uh, just scrutinized so much and et cetera, et cetera. Well, I get a chance to experience and be a part of both sides of the world. I get a chance to rub shoulders and talk with people who pretty much are behind the scenes and making things work with the university. And I get a chance to learn from those guys every day. So I got the uh, physical and athletic portion of what we deem to be great in this country uh, with football and, you know, from the college ranks up into the professional ranks. And now I get to professionally be around some of the greatest people in the Midwest, some of the greatest people in the country. And that's all of the different faculty members within Ohio State that really you don't get a chance to see but make these things go on. So I'm extremely blessed with my situation and what I have going on. Uh, Buckeye Nation have, has been so receptive to me and, you know, just warm feelings with uh, inviting me back, arms wide open, you know what I mean, smiles on their faces, and I can do nothing but give back uh, to these great people who helped shape me into the man that I am today, and that is The Ohio State University. Talking to Troy Smith, the Heisman winner from Ohio State University, and now back uh, working in the athletic department. So once again, um, when you think about your career and everything, and I'd like to take you back just briefly, um, your relationship with Coach Tressel in the beginning, you came in kind of a guy, remember you recruited as an athlete, you came in, we, we saw you in practice, we knew you had what it took, but it took you a little while to maybe, I don't know, convince him or convince them. What was that like for you trying to go through that, knowing you wanted to be on the field leading this team, but yet there was this thing, this background noise about, well, if he buys into the program kind of thing. And um, what was that relationship like? Can you describe what, what it was like? Was it real that you had to kind of, maybe reshape your attitude or motives or to get in there? Very much so. It was very much so. Uh, my first couple of years here at Ohio State, I was a young, selfish, self-centered, uh, 17, 18, 19-year-old who only had been thinking about himself in reference to uh, 
you know, getting better in life, doing things the right way, et cetera, et cetera. And that was the exact opposite. And that was the wrong way to go about doing it. Uh, the, the, uh, so to speak, the paradigm shift for me happened when I got a chance to really sit down with Coach Tress and I got a chance to sit down with a couple other figures within football whom their opinions really mattered and they, they kept it all the way 100% with me. They kept it real. They looked me dead in my eyes and told me that we're going to give you a chance to really quarterback this team and you can, and only you can jack it up. So, um, that was the, the, the light switch flipping for me and putting myself into a situation to where, uh, the most important thing was how my teammates felt. The most important thing was how the coaching staff felt. The most important thing was uh, about other people's feelings as opposed to mine. And it was a transformation. I did have to go through it. And uh, I wouldn't change anything about my life because it makes me who I am right now. Hey, Troy, real quick, get you out of here on this. I know you're involved with the Ce- Celebrities for Diabetes, the Central Ohio Diabetes Association, uh, going to be at the Archie Griffin Ballroom at the Ohio Union on Tuesday. It's you, Gonzo Pittman, Lloyd Carr, Marcus Ray. I know Marcus loves to talk a little bit, so that'll be fun. Rich Hewlett as well. Um, this is going to be a pretty fun event you're part of on Tuesday. Huge event, huge event. Encouraging everybody, if you can, to come out and uh, celebrate, uh, even though – you know, it's taken certain people out of the frame in, in terms of uh, being able to live and put themselves in a good situation. But that's the reason why we're getting together, to raise funds, to raise the awareness on diabetes, to have an understanding that we as people are here for one another. So let's work through one another. And I'm excited about the chance and opportunity to be able to rub shoulders with these guys and uh, smile at them and, you know, have a good time and talk about great times that we had back in the past. Troy, we appreciate your candor, my friend, and look forward to seeing you on Saturday. I have a feeling you'll be pretty geeked up on the sidelines. <laughs> you got it, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Troy. Thanks, Troy. Yeah, the, the Wolverine.